Bannockburn Bridge in central Otago, New Zealand is a key connection on the popular Dunstan Cycle Trail. It spans the former Quarra River section of Lake Dunstan. However, not many people realise that this is actually the fifth bridge to span across this stretch of water, providing the gateway to Bannockburn, Ken Muir and the Nevis. Consequently, the purpose of this short documentary is to take you through the history and the development of the crossings in this area over the last 150 years. The story starts in 1867 when the Dunstan Times newspaper reports a new road to the Nevis. James Stewart had established a punt, similar to the one shown, which was advertised strong enough to carry the heaviest horse teams. The punt was located near the junction of the Bannockburn Creek with the Quarra River, about 200 metres downstream from the current bridge. The punt had started its life in 1863 as a spoon gold dredge before it was converted into the punt and known as the Quarra Ferry. James Stewart was an astute businessman and created the Ferry Hotel as a second means of extracting revenue from the passing travellers. The remains of the hotel shown here in 1976 have now since disappeared beneath the waters of Lake Dunstan. Business was good with traffic increasing to the Carrick Range Gold Reefs, so John Richards started the construction of a second punt 200 metres upstream from the current bridge in 1869. Safety practices were pretty lax at the time and a tragedy occurred on Richard's punt in July 1872. Thomas Hutton, a passenger carrying a lump of coal for his fire along with the lamp, stumbled and fell off the punt into the river and was drowned. The resulting coroner's inquest instructed Richards and the other punt owners to put up a safety railing on the punts, but only from sundown to sunrise. By 1871 the Newcastle pit was mining coal on the Bannockburn side of the Quarra River. It needed to transport sacks of coal to Cromwell for sale. To do this it built a river chair located about 150 metres upstream of the current bridge and similar to the one shown. The chair was suspended from a wire rope and pulled across the river by hemp ropes. However, the river chair and the punts soon became obsolete in 1874 when the first bridge was constructed. This bridge, known as the Quarra Bridge, was located between the two punts near the existing bridge site. It was privately built and authorised to charge the tolls as shown. These tolls covered all combinations of horses and wagons right down to sheep and cattle. Their expense made them hugely unpopular and in February 1878 the bridge was bought by the Vincent County Council and the tolls abolished. The council did not have much luck with this bridge because seven months later on the 29th of September it was swept away in the great 1878 flood. The story goes that on that fateful Sunday morning the town crier ran up and down nearby Crummel's Main Street ringing his bell and instructing the town folk to go down to the Crummel Bridge. They did so where they got to watch the Quarra Bridge wreckage drift past in the turbulent muddy waters. It was such slow progress building the replacement second bridge that one of the punts had to be brought back into service until it was opened in March 1879. This image shows two large wagon trains crossing the bridge. The bridge wasn't very well maintained and it fell into a state of disrepair. Temporary repairs had just been completed when on the morning of 13th of January 1896, two miners going to their claim found the bridge mysteriously on fire. The whole structure was extensively damaged, along with a 4 metre section missing in the middle and burning timbers dropping into the river below. The structure was scrapped and a new third bridge was built in the same location. It opened to much fanfare and ceremony in July 1897 and was named the McAndrew Bridge. The bridge provided good service throughout the height of the gold dredging boom, as this image shows with a dredge operating in the background. The bridge had one interesting incident in the later years of the dredging. In August 1942, the Molyneux Gold Dredge was being moved up the Quarra River to mine the section upstream. The river levels were high and there was not enough clearance for the dredge to pass under the bridge. The dam gates at the Quarra Falls Dam near Queenstown had been closed to reduce the water level. Eventually as the water level dropped, another attempt was made to winch the dredge up the river. The gap was so tight that some of the dredge workers were required to climb onto the top of the dredge to hammer down the roofing iron. This was to stop it catching on the bolts on the underside of the bridge. In doing so, one of the dredge crew, Richard Bow, slipped and fell the full height into the river rapids below. Despite wearing a greatcoat at the time, Richard, a strong swimmer, managed to swim ashore safely in an area known for its drownings. By 1964, the McAndrew Bridge was in poor condition with weight and speed restrictions on it, having reached the end of its life. Construction of a new fourth bridge commenced next to it. This new single lane bridge was supported by two cast in situ concrete piers, each 17 metres high. These supported two prefabricated 73 metre long steel girders on which a reinforced concrete deck was laid. The bridge was opened on the 13th of November 1964. In early 1965, tenders were let for the demolition of the McAndrew Bridge and work commenced in March. Jeff Connolly and Martin Meehan, local contractors, tendered and won the demolition contract. 
The health and safety approach to the demolition was somewhat more relaxed back then. With the stone piers remaining, this would be the view of Bannockburn Bridge crossing for many years. The decision to construct the Clyde Dam with the resulting formation of Lake Dunstan would result in a lake level slightly above the existing bridge elevation, triggering its replacement. Early in 1987, work commenced on the fifth and current bridge. This would be a 148 metre long double carriageway bridge, supported by four concrete piers. In April 1987, the abutment earthworks had been completed and work was underway pouring in the rock anchors for the pier foundations. By August 1987, the abutments had been completed and by October, work was well underway on the two 29 metre high cast in situ reinforced concrete piers. By January 1988, the first sections of the 348 metre spans of the calendar Hamilton type steel trusses had been fitted. The total weight of the steelwork would be 250 tonnes. Later in August 1988, this view towards Bannockburn shows the precast deck panels fitted and being readied for pouring the in situ concrete. The same view in October shows the bridge nearing completion with the concrete running surface poured and handrails being fixed. It's interesting to note that the bridge incorporated the latest earthquake engineering of the time with seismic energy dissipators fixed to the Cromwell abutments. The bridge was opened on the 7th of October 1989 with the final roading earthworks transforming the old bridge into a bridge to nowhere. The delayed filling of Lake Dunstan finally commenced in April 1992 with the adoption of a multi-level staged filling. This next video clip filmed in October 1992 by Ron Murray shows both bridges with a partially filled Lake Dunstan. Prior to the final lake filling, the old bridge was removed to prevent it becoming a boating hazard. In addition, the northern cut stone pillar of the old 1874 MacAndrew Bridge was salvaged to form the Bannockburn welcoming sign. Thus ends the history of the development of the Bannockburn Crossing. I hope this provides you with some interesting information for the next time you walk, cycle or drive across the Bannockburn Bridge.